If you had to fight a monster that is 10 times your weight, how would you approach the situation? The f is it? It looks like grandma, the fucking thing! I thought you supposed to make friends with these guys. I don't know, I'm new to it. If you're smart, you wouldn't rush into it. Wait, where are you? I was bandaging. He's hitting me! He's dead. Oh, dude, I dodged that! This is not going as planned. You would devise a plan. And his name is John C. Oh my god, it's a deer! Come back, the deer's take them on. What the <laughs> is this game, man? <laughs> Outward is a fancy RPG with its core focus being on survival. Released in March 2019, it was created by a small indie studio called Nine Dots. And just how small is this game studio? Well, they don't even have a Wikipedia page. Outward sets out to be different from other RPGs by making it so that you're just a commoner, you're not some glorified hero. You just go about your business and go on adventures. And to make things a bit more enjoyable, they sprinkle in an element of survival, so you have to keep well fed, hydrated, and not freeze to death. Your actions have consequences, and you're not limited to a certain playstyle. When it was initially released, it got mixed reviews, but by December 2020, it had sold 1 million copies, which is pretty good for a game studio consisting of 10 people. It's available on Xbox, PlayStation, and PC. And of course, the most important aspect, it has co-op. You can play a split screen, all online with friends. So with all the basics being covered, let's take a look and see if Outward is worth playing in 2023. Outward doesn't try to be your typical RPG. It tries and breaks the mold, and it does this by introducing co-op and a survival system. It has the typical elements you'd expect from a survival game, such as collecting food, collecting resources, and also just being careful what you ingest. Can I drink seawater? I'm just gonna hurt. You can't stop me. Drink the seawater, plop! You are now thirsty. Oh, I'm pretty sure than that. Pick up the bandage. No bandages. He's thirsty. Drink more seawater. Drink until you are nourished. It's a wife's tale that you can't drink seawater. Drink it. Drink as much as you need. I'm dying. Help me. Oh, I'm dead. Okay, I died. Who had 30 seconds? <laughs> you can die from drinking seawater? I thought it was a myth! Leave a like if you've also died by drinking seawater. One of the most surprising elements of this game is just how difficult it can be. The combat doesn't look as fancy as Elden Ring, but I guarantee you it's just as punishing. The game also doesn't allow you to manually save, it has a auto save enabled, which means every decision you make in this game can't be reversed whether that's something in a quest line you decide to do, or just simply die into a boss. I want my money back. Hand it over or I'll beat it out of you. Wait, you're mugging me? After all the crap we just went through? <laughs> um, what do you think? Do I, do I actually mug him? Do it, you coward. Yes, I'm mugging you. Now give me what you owe me. Take my money. Buy yourself some. When you die, you are punished, but it's not the end of the game. You might just end up in, I don't know, a jail cell, or washed up on a beach, or in a cave with a robot. Yeah, I didn't quite understand that bit either. Outward plays like a very old school RPG, but with a modern day twist on it. There's very limited fast travel. If you want to hit the next town over, you either have to walk there and try not to die on the way, all spend money and get inside someone's caravan. I want to travel with you. Yes. What the fuck? Ah, uh, changed my mind. Farewell, my friend. The map is very basic. It doesn't even give you an indicator as to where you are on the map. So you have to properly navigate by looking around your surroundings. There's no real quest markers either. They'll tell you where to go in terms of, hey, this person's in this town. But for the most part, you have to try and figure out who's who. One of the first quests you get given is that you have to pay a debt. 
Now, there's several ways to do this. You could either go away, grind some material and pay it, or you could go do a special quest, which will basically make you not have to pay the coins. And better still, you could ignore the quest completely and become homeless. Um, if you're homeless, just buy a house. Mm. I really like the variety of weapons this game has to offer. You can use anything from sword and shield to a bow or even a pistol. Not only that, you can cast spells and choose different schools of magic to specialize in. The combat in this game is surprisingly simple. You avoid damage by carefully timing your dodges and blocks, whilst also managing your stamina bar. There are a variety of skills you can unlock for each weapon, and you even have the ability to set down traps and try and lure your enemies into them. But I have to say, my favorite tactic is dragging enemies into other enemies who just start attacking each other and I just sit back and watch. I, I, I can't open the satchel. Oh my god. S the crab's attacking him. Help me, crab. Yeah, let's fucking go. <laughs> crab, crab, crab. Get him, crabby. You lobster fuck. Help me. Help me. You right there? Mm-hmm. I think she's broken. I do somewhat like the lore in this game, however, I do find it super annoying when talking to NPCs. The Blue Chamber Collective is about coming together as a family. It's like family. they start doing the voice line and then just stop, so you then have to read it yourself. Now, I'm not against reading, but I also want this game to make up its mind. Is it going to the whole voice line, or do I have to actually pay attention to the words on the screen? Overall though, the gameplay is actually quite fun, but the main question is, how does the survival aspect fit into this? Whenever I think survival games, I think of one thing and one thing only, and that is of course, Inventory magic. I tell you now, the true end game is having a backpack big enough to carry all the stuff you need to survive in the wild. One of the mechanics in this game is that there's a day night cycle and time passes and so do the seasons. Your stamina bar will deplete over time the more tired you get and because of this you'll be forced to go to sleep and rest up. And if you choose to do this in the wild, you're going to need a tent and a fireplace to do so. Unless you somehow figure out a way to craft a can of monster. And that's the thing with this game. The crafting is so in-depth. There's so much you can do with it. And it's not just like creating food and drink. It's also creating armor, weapons and so forth. You also need to be aware of the temperature in the biome that you're in. If it's snowing, you're going to get cold and you might die of hypothermia. If you're in the desert, you're going to overheat and probably pass out and get eaten by ants. A lot of thought has got into the survival system, even stupid stuff like dropping your backpack during a fight so you don't have to carry as much weight and you're more nimble. Personally though, after a while, I do find it a bit tedious having to remember to make sure my character has had a drink or that he's eaten enough food. I mean, it's a nice element. It shows detail and immersion to some degree, but I could also get that from a Tamagotchi. So, I do like the survival aspect of this game, but I do also not like it, if that makes sense. This is the top of the mountain, eh? There must be Oh, some... shit! <laughs> oh, shit! Oh, God! <laughs> I not see it. Should we prepare? Should we run down and prepare? Get some tripwires out and shit? Eddie, I don't it's have time favorite. to repair. It's trying to fucking kill me. I need you to hit it. It's doing no... I'm doing no damage to this. It hit me for half my health. I don't think I, I'm not sure about this. No, Eddie. we need to go back and prepare. Eddie, there's a sword up here. I want it. For fuck's sake, the whole game is about preparing and all that shit, isn't it? Eddie, I don't have time to repair. It's trying to kill me. Oh fuck it! Didn't um put my. Uh, uh, I got a sword. And... Run, <laughs> run. In my opinion, I think the co-op is what really brings this game to life, and not so much the survival aspect. The last time I got to play an RPG with co-op was probably Fable 3, which is actually quite funny because this game gives me huge Fable vibes. 
By all means, you can play this game alone. I've just found it to be more enjoyable with a friend. And honestly, some of the puzzle solving, I'm not too sure if I could do it solo. So it's actually good to have someone there by your side. Also, as I said before, this game can be very unforgiving and difficult. So having someone there to help pick you up when you get knocked down isn't always such a bad thing. From what I understand the co-op mode, progression isn't saved for the person who joins the host. They get to tag along, go on the adventure and even pick up items, but their actual progression in the game won't change. It is worth noting though, you can pick up your teammates backpack and that can also cause some confusion and might even cause you to sell stuff that you probably shouldn't have. For this reason, I would strongly advise that you play with friends just so you don't get scammed out of some items. When I first got recommended this game, I wasn't too sure what to think. I mean, it was an indie title with very basic looking graphics and somewhat of a survival element. I kind of felt a bit cautious about even playing it in the first place. But to my surprise, and a nice surprise, 20 hours in and I'm really enjoying this title. I don't usually play RPGs because I find it hard to find one that really grabs my attention. The last time I really enjoyed an RPG was Fable and that's going back quite some time. However, the more I play Outward, the more addictive I find myself to this title. I have to say, as far as indie games go, this is probably one of the best ones I've played in quite some time. This game is by no means perfect. I mean, there's the odd bug here and there, and yes, the graphics are quite dated. But I think overall, the gameplay just really is a 10 for me. It's worth noting, this game isn't very noob friendly. You will die at the start at least a couple of times before you start to realise how combat works and how to survive. But I don't necessarily think that's a problem. I mean, look at Elden Ring. It's very unapologetic. It's a hard game. It's meant for people who want a challenge. And I feel like this is the same. Yes, it's slightly more forgiving in the sense of if you die, you just get pushed back a bit. It's not necessarily game over. But anyway, should you play Outward in 2023? I think yes. To anyone who's hungry for a fable-like RPG and with a survival aspect and co-op, jump on into this. You won't regret it. But hey, that's just my humble opinion. Let me know in the comments below if you agree and what you like or dislike about Outward. And on that bombshell, I'll end the video. As always, if you got this far in the video, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you want to see more of me, by all means subscribe. If you want to see me play more RPGs, leave a like so I know you want to see more of this content. I'll leave a couple of videos on the screen right now which you might enjoy. And a big thank you to my patrons and YouTube members. With that, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.